Hi everyone, my name's Claire and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to colour a beautiful reddish golden blonde hair and also black hair and we're using this design by Maud Lemoyne from the brilliant Colouring Heaven issue Mysterious Women. If you enjoy this tutorial and you'd like to colour along you can order your copy from shop.colouringheaven.com and the link is in the description below. So you can see that I have completed the rest of the page apart from the hair, which we will do together today. And I thought I'd do this because it will show us what the finished product looks like completely coloured. So we've got a whole project done and I just thought it would be better than having some hair just floating on the page and then not knowing how it incorporates into the illustration. So I used Prismacolor and Luminance pencils for this and then I used a alcohol marker for the background and also a lighter peach pencil over the top because I was really trying to create a very pale pastel soft peach for this background and I'm really pleased with it so far and all we've got left to do is add the hair so we're going to have that lovely golden brownish blonde on this lady and then we'll have the black hair on this lady so we'll start off with that golden brown and the colours that I have chosen are all from the Polychromos pencils by Faber-Castell. So the reason that I'm favouring these over the wax pencils that I used for the rest of the illustration is that these are oil-based and that means that they have a stronger lead that can keep a point sharp for longer than a wax. And that's really important when you're colouring hair if you want to create the illusion of those individual strands and a little bit of texture. So the colours that I have chosen for this particular hair colour is, I'll read them all out and I'll read the numbers as well, we have Burnt Sienna which is number 283, Raw Umber number 180, Brown Ochre 182 and Dark Naples Ochre 184. So we're not going to use the darkest of those colours, the Burnt Sienna, until later on in the video. So I want to make sure that we get our base colours down first and that we use that darker colour just to add in some deeper, more contrasted areas to the hair. I don't want to go too far with a dark colour and then we can't, we can't go back. So we'll start off with the darkest of the colours that we have left, which is the raw umber. And we're going to take this in sections. This is how I always do hair because I find it a lot easier than trying to plot and plan out exactly where the highlights and shadows go. We'll just do it in sections. And for this illustration, it's quite easy to do that because we do have some pre sort of sectioned off bits of hair that we can use. So I'm gonna start on this side here. You can see I've got some pencil on there already, but it doesn't matter. And um, yeah, let's go. So just make sure that your tips are always sharp and if they start to blunt down, just give them a quick sharpen, maybe not even a whole rotation in the pencil sharpener, just to get the very tip nice and crisp for those lines. So starting off with the raw umber, we're gonna go from the top of our section and use a flicking motion like this, pull down to fill up our section. In fact, I'm gonna start just on this bit here. So we'll concentrate on a very small area at a time and just very simple flicking motions, but we don't wanna to go too far into the center with it because the center is going to act as our highlight area. So really you just have to look at the size of the section and gauge how much of that color you want to put down. Same at the bottom. So always making sure that your pencil is sharp and a good way of doing that if it's not quite ready to sharpen yet, but you still need a bit of a crisper edge, is to just keep slightly rotating the pencil because as you color with it, that side of the core will become quite flat and blunt. So if you just very slightly rotate the pencil, you'll carry on getting a really sharp point of the pencil. You probably can barely see me doing it, but I'm just very slightly rotating just to get that sharp edge. So again, just trying to gauge how much color to put down and this becomes easier the more you do it. 
but we don't want to go too far with it. Now, when you're looking at the length of the flicks, that's important too. We don't want to do all of our flicks to exactly the same length, so all of the lengths um, stop, like say there. We want to vary them a bit. So you can see that some of these lengths are shorter, some of them are a bit longer, and the same on this side. We want variation so that it's not just a solid block of highlight in the middle. It's kind of tonal. So once you've put a bit of that in, you go to your next colour, which is the Brown Ochre 182. And same again, just carrying on, but just making those lengths a little bit longer and creeping towards the centre of the section. So just a little bit longer. Don't go too far with it because that's when you can start to lose your highlighted section. But all we're doing at the moment is sort of plotting out exactly where we want our strands to be. Then move very quickly onto the Dark Naples Ochre 184 because this is going to be our highlight colour. And again, you can just drag those lines down and drag them up, just flicking, use that flicking motion all the time. And it doesn't matter too much about how far into the centre you go. So because this is the highlight colour, it really doesn't matter. But I would still like to try and keep a little bit of the white of the paper. Now, I know you can see there's some pencil on here, so it's not very clean, but as we come to do the other sections, it might be a little bit clearer for you to see. Um, and then that is your first layer done. So you've plotted out kind of how far you want colours to go and still retain that really light bit in the centre. So we're gonna come back in with the darkest one, which is the raw umber and we're gonna build that up a little bit. So we're gonna be pressing slightly harder than we were before. Always rotating that pencil, keeping the sharp edge. And you'll find that you can drag the lines down a little bit more in certain areas, because what we're looking for is like a, a jagged sort of zigzag look to um, the hair, just to make it look as if the shine is on it, but it's also showing, showing the, the texture in the hair as well. So again, just flicking up and not going too far with it. Moving on to the next colour, the brown ochre, and continuing that. Some of your flicks you will want to bring kind of all the way into the centre because, again, it's all about variation. So don't think that you, you have to just have this solid block in the centre of pure um, Naples ochre, the yellow colour because that won't look right either. So you can always just bring one or two strands up and over that highlighted area. And again, with the Dark Naples Ochre, you can start to build up that colour and that shine using a little bit of harder pressure, but not going too far with it so that you're losing the, some of the white of the paper. It's a bit of a balancing game to see, you know, how much you want to put down. But when it's looking something like this, we're going to bring in that burnt sienna that we put away earlier, because now that we've got the base colours down, it's time to deepen the, the contrast between the highlight that we've left here and, you know, the, the tips and the crown of the hair. So again, very, very sharp, and we're not going to go too far with this. We're just deepening up the contrast. Always rotating, always trying to keep individual strands visible to the eye just for that effect it's a slight realism effect of the hair not being a solid color and having a bit of texture but again like i said some of these strands these very fine flicks can come down into the blonde just to show those individual strands so we're looking for something a little bit like this. Now, it's up to you how yours looks at the moment if you want to keep adding layers. Um, you know, sometimes it's better to take a step back and have a look and see if you think that that's enough because you really don't want to overwork it. If you start to add too much and too many flicks, they will start to blend together and sort of merge together and it won't look individual um, or textured. So take a step back, see what yours looks like at the moment, and you can decide from there if you want to add any more, any more flicks and strands. You can also add a bit of your lightest colour, this uh, Dark Naples Ochre, back in 
if you feel it's got a little bit too dark. These pencils aren't the greatest uh, for opacity, so layering over dark colours, but you will be able to do a little bit because it's so sharp. It will almost sort of make its own indent in the colour. It won't uh, cover it like opaquely, but it will, it will do a bit. So just as I say, try not to overwork it too much. And if there are strands of the darker colour that you think look a little bit too sharp, you can also just blur those out a little bit with your lighter colour, but just don't go too far with it. That's, that's really the best tip I can give you. But I think that is about right for now. I reserve the right to come back to that section when we've done a bit more and work on it again. But I think for now, that's, um, that's probably pretty good for what we can do. So let's carry on with our sections then. And I've got a little sharpener next to me, very simple sharpener, because I just want to make sure that these tips are always really crisp. So very, very quick sharpen there. And you can see that they're really sharp. And it does help just to keep a little sharpener next to you for some very light. I mean, I'm not pushing the pencil into the sharpener by any means. It's I'm barely pushing it at all, actually. It's just to get that tip super crisp. There we go. So it might be that the very, very tips of your pencils do snap. That's fine, but polychromos generally stay really, really sharp. And going back in with the same colours. So we've got our raw umber to start with. And we're going to do exactly the same thing. Now, another tip for when you are trying to follow the curvature of an illustration, like, like I'm trying to do with this, is to rotate your paper and make sure that you are colouring in the most comfortable motion of your wrist. And what I mean by that is, if I rotate this now, the wrist naturally wants to do that. So if you put your paper in a position where your wrist can make that motion, it is a lot easier to keep the curvature of the illustration um, correct the curvature of, of the colouring correct. So you can do it kind of backwards, but it, it gets a little bit awkward doing it backwards. So I would say keep rotating your paper to where it feels comfortable for you to do these flicks if you want to make sure that they are definitely following that curve. I'm going to put a bit of this brown down here as well because this is almost like its own little section. And then next with the brown ochre. I see. I don't know if you heard that, but the little very end of the tip just snapped off there. That's fine. It's still really sharp. See, if you're wanting to do colouring that blends seamlessly, I don't know if you can get any better than wax-based pencils, especially Prismacolor, because they, they just blend themselves. But when you're doing, like say, for example, on the leaves where I use the Prismacolor, you can see I wanted that blend. But when you're doing things like hair, fur, details, you want something harder and sharper. We're coming back now with the dark Naples ochre, constantly rotating the pencil and trying to keep a little bit more shine this time. So the best way of doing that is to maximise the contrast as much as possible. And that means make your shadows and the shaded areas as dark as you can with it still looking good and the light areas and highlights as light as they can while still looking like what it is you want to achieve. You don't want complete white space in the middle. But I've left a little bit more white space on this this time um, and we'll see how that goes. So really you're just cycling back from dark to light and building up the areas of colour making some of those strands a little bit longer, but we're not encroaching too far into the centre. I'm not really sure what I would call this hair colour. It's definitely more blonde, I would say, the overall effect. It kind of reminds me of a bit like of um, like Rapunzel hair, that sort of tone. It's not pure white blonde, but I think it's a really nice colour to do. So bringing in just a little bit of the dark Naples ochre to redefine the lighter areas a bit more, but still keeping that little bit of white here and there 
We don't want it to be pure white because that wouldn't be realistic. But when you've got a, a spotlight shining on very glossy hair, you know that you're going to get um, that kind of highlight, jagged highlight in the middle. So now that we've done two layers of our three base colours, I can come back in with that burnt sienna and add a little bit more depth and definition to this darker area. I'm always trying to make sure that I'm not going too far with the dark colour because I, I make that mistake all the time. And I mean, it's not a mistake per se, but I always seem to go too far with the dark colours. It's one of my foibles when it comes to colouring. But yeah, just with a very, very slight, sharp edge, you can go over some of that blonde just to create some deeper strands. So I'll turn that around and again, take this time to assess what the, um, what the colouring is looking like, whether there is enough depth for you in the shadow areas and whether you need to add a little bit more. I would say I like these two sections that we've just done more than I like the first section. And I think that's because it looks a little bit more strandy. <laughs> so that means that I'm going to just come back in here a little bit with the darkest colour and add a few more tiny little strands and just try and match it up a little bit. But yeah, I'm really happy with that so far. So on the underneath here, this is where you'll want it to be naturally just a little bit darker because the hair is curled around and it would be a shaded area under there. So we're going to start this time with the dark, darkest colour, which is the burnt sienna. And because we know we need this area to be a little bit darker, now you see I'm doing that motion again and it's not natural for my wrist. So we turn it over and I can then make that more natural upward flicking motion. And we don't have to be too precise about this area, but we just wanna make sure that it's definitely darker than the other areas just to show that bit of shading. So picking up the raw umber, and you shouldn't really need the Naples for this because this is a, a shadowed area that probably wouldn't look very blonde at all. So just filling in most of it with the raw umber and then maybe just coming back in a little bit with the burnt sienna and just making sure it looks a little bit darker but still has slight variation in there. Obviously it depends how big you, you um, your illustration is and how large these sections are in knowing how far you can go and how much room you have to play with. So let me just have a look at that. It doesn't look dark enough to me um, just on this quick assessment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my polychromos and I'm gonna get a bit of a darker color. Let's try walnut brown because I think that's the darkest or one of the definitely one of the darkest colors of brown in the polychromos and let's just add a little bit of this see whether it makes much of a difference um, let's have a look reassess yeah I think it's I think that's about right just really wanted to make it look like it's a darker shadowed area leave it for now I can always come back and mess about with it later and I probably will because that's what I'm like <laughs> um let's continue then so this video is basically going to be very repetitive in terms of technique because my hair technique is just this it's the flicks it's the highlights it's the shadows and it's the kind of making sure you've got that zigzag 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 of highlight across um so yeah let's carry on Starting again with the raw umber, and we will do this little bit of hair here, making sure pencils are really sharp. So not going very far with this at all this time because it's a smaller section of hair, and I'm just gauging all the while how much to put down. It might possibly be better to start off with your light colours in these smaller areas and then build up your darks. I've just always used the method of, of going with your dark first but I know a lot of people and probably the most proper method is to do your lights first so that you don't go too far with the dark 
it's just what you've got used to, isn't it? What you feel more comfortable with. And then bringing in the Burnt Sienna to deepen. And that one is sort of underneath this big swoop that we've done. So just want to make sure that that shadow is shown there if it's being overlapped. And then the same at the end here, just bringing up some flicks, but because this is a very small area, we don't want to do too much. So I've just resharpened that and I'm very lightly doing some strokes across the center. Turn it around, reassess. It's probably a little bit too thick, that, that line coming up there. Um, and this is also overlapped. So we'll have a bit of shading under here. I keep wiping my page with my hand. That's another bad habit. Should use my cute little brush just to brush it off. Otherwise I'm gonna start um, smudging things. Maybe just bring in the ochre again, the Naples, to brighten up the yellow tone. Maybe I'll even bring in a bit of this walnut, just a little bit because it is being overlapped, but not much at all. Okay, so that's that bit done. Let's move on to the larger section. So again, you can try to work out your own sections if the illustrator hasn't left you any guidelines, but luckily we do have some on here. Now these kind of curved lines that are left, I'm pretty much gonna ignore those. Um, I think because I think if I start to do blends along the curves it will just look strange with the hair behind it so I'm gonna I'm gonna make the choice to ignore them it's up to you what you want to do and I don't know if it's gonna turn out good or not but you'll find out with me <laughs> uh, okay so roll umber sorry to keep swizzing this round but it just is easier to do that with the wrist motion but this is actually a beautiful illustration and I can't I can't think that I've seen this artist's work before, but I must have done because I believe she's been in other Colouring Heaven editions. But I really, really like this one. If this is how all of her work looks, I'll definitely be looking more into her work. So you can see here that there isn't much of a strand effect going on compared to say here. And that's why we do our first uh, base layer just to plot the amount of colour and how far we're going with it. And then we can go in with more strands. So I want to bring in the Burnt Sienna now to deepen it up. Just to add some really light flicks. Just really trying not to go too far. I think if you're like me, you work on things far too much. Um, you overwork it and overwork it and then you realise you've gone too, too far. So I'm really trying not to do that. I'm just varying the pencils that I'm using here back and forward with different um, tones until I've got it looking how I want it to look. And there's not too much white left on there so it's not looking it's looking a bit more like this first section it's not looking as shiny as this one um but it is a smaller section so it's it's very difficult to rein yourself in but it's all right it looks good and you know at the end of the day hair is not all going to look exactly the same so i would just embrace that if you've got any areas that don't look as good as other areas embrace it because it could be the way the light is shining you know that's my excuse anyway i'm sticking to it so uh next big section um i'm going to do all of this as one section this kind of teardrop shape uh, let's get our raw umber give it a sharpen so looking at the curve i need to turn her around once again and then start like this swooping motions and just, just wondering if i want to curve it this way as well it's a, it curves out at both sides so i might just want to do some curves that go this way so we've got that way and then this way just to remind you again not to make all of your flicks the same length these are really varied some are really long some are really short 
And this motion will naturally make, when you touch the pencil to paper here, heavier and thicker than it will when you flick away. So it'll get lighter. So that's the raw umber. Then we move on to the brown ochre. And let's give it a quick sharpen. We'll continue our lines. It's good to show you on this big section. You can really see the detail of what I'm doing. And again, at this point, when you're doing your first layer, you are just plotting where the colours are going to go. And then again with Dark Naples Ochre. Now the paper that I've used to print this design is Nina cardstock. It's the Bristol Vellum and it's in the US letter size because I haven't found it in normal, well I say normal, in standard British A4, uh, which is what I would normally print on. So I get it shipped over from Amazon in the US and I just really like it. I like the texture and the grain of it. You can get loads of layers on. Um, this is actually printed on the side of the paper that doesn't have as much texture. So you can tell when you feel each side of the paper, one is rougher than the other. And I've printed this on the less rough, less toothy side. Because sometimes I do find that having an awful lot of tooth can be a hindrance, um, depending, on, depending on what you're doing really. But I've printed this on the less toothier side so that we don't have as many layers and gaps to fill. So that is our base layer done. You can see that I've kept the white shining really clearly on this piece. And now we're going to go back to the raw umber and start to build. So keeping rotating, making sure it's sharp all the time, varying those lengths, maybe taking them just a little bit further than they were before so that we have some darker strands coming up into the highlight but again not going too far got the brown ochre and then back with the dark naples ochre to make sure because you, you, there's an awful lot of brown on this so we're using this color to make sure that that golden tone is you know it remains in the hair color and we've still got that white showing through which we will try and keep as we go to the burnt sienna again making sure just a little twist in the sharpener that it's really sharp and i chose this burnt sienna because it is a reddish brown and because we're doing a, a reddish blonde rather than an ashy or grayer blonde we wanted our dark shadow colors to be in the same tonal family so that's what's keeping it looking quite reddish and warm and golden so i'm going to turn it back around and just do a quick assessment i know that we need to do more of this but sometimes when your illustration's upside down it can sort of trick you your eye and you're not sure whether you've done enough or not so we need to look at her right way up and make sure that she's looking good that's an example of you curving the wrong way. So you can see I've curved towards the center rather than following the curve of the um, outline of the illustration. And I'm doing it the wrong way here, but I just want to keep it upright for a sec. So that we can make sure we're putting the strokes in the right place. So I'm just deepening that up a little bit, not too fussed about having individual strokes right up at the crown of the head because we're just making that um, a shadowed area so you probably wouldn't see as much detail in the shadowed area but where the light hits it we want to make sure that there is lots of differentiation of the strands of color that's in this hair the thing that's kind of annoying is that you can see these two curved lines underneath and i'm just wondering if it's worth me adding a bit of this burnt sienna into the curvature this could go wrong, <laughs> just to show that the hair is, is taking on this, this curve, I guess. I don't know, it looks kind of strange to me. There are ways of whiting out and erasing parts of an image. 
to suit but I've always found when I've tried those techniques in the past of maybe adding acrylic paint the pencil just never works on top of it and it never looks as smooth and it just doesn't sit right it doesn't look right and it can become very gungy so yeah but I've added I've added a bit into those curves just to embrace them I guess um, rather than completely ignore them and maybe it works maybe it doesn't but this is a big experiment so let's have another look see what we think of how this looks all as one piece of hair i think it's looking pretty good i just think that we need some more of the mid colors so a bit of brown ochre let's bring this in a bit more again just really try not to go too far but i also want it to look as multi-dimensional as this area looks and then the dark naples ochre again just bringing back golden tone because that can sometimes get lost with all these browns now as i say i don't know whether it was a good idea to follow the, these curves of the illustration or not you can tell me in the comments what you think you would do when you're coloring this illustration and how it would turn out for you and if you are coloring along with me i hope that you like the color choices for this hair i wanted the two ladies to be completely different and to contrast um, which is why I didn't just go with a blonde and a brunette or, you know, something that were quite close together. I, I decided to go for the black and a blondish tone so that they really contrasted on the page. And that is also why I decided to go with the pastel peach tone as the background, because I didn't want anything to distract or take away from the main focus of the picture, which is these two ladies. So that's um, a good tip. Don't make your background you know a really bright vibrant color you just want to let that sit and let it complement the rest of the illustration which i think it does Give it a little swizz round again just one more time and making sure that we've got lots and lots of strands going on let's see that looks pretty nice yeah i don't think again I've left as much white as I have here, but we can always like change these a little bit later on to if we don't think it's blending in quite right. So what I want to do though, is bring back this walnut brown because I think that that is such a large section of hair. We've got such a large bit of shading there. We do need further shading. We need something deeper to contrast a little bit. So with the sharp edge of the walnut brown, we shall just add in darker area but we're not going far with this maybe a little bit of shading underneath these flower petals because they are sitting on top and would create a bit of natural shadow under there let's do one or two let's see this is where I start to mess up <laughs> just do one or two coming out Right, I'm going to leave it because look at me, I'm still carrying on. Um, I'm going to end up going too far. <laughs> so again, just bring back that yellow. If you think it has diminished while you've been putting all the brown on. Okay, going to leave that for now. And I'm going to continue the rest of this hair. Now that you have the, uh, the basic technique down, I'm going to continue this. I'm going to speed it up a little bit because I'm sure that you don't want to hear me repeating and repeating myself all of the time. Um, but I'm not just going to cut it out completely. I will just speed it up so that you can slow it down yourself on YouTube if um, you want to see it, you know, a bit more step by step. But I think you've got the gist of it hopefully so far. And uh, when I come back, we will start with the black tone.
Okay, so we finished the golden blondy brownish hair, whatever tone it is. And uh, you can see that on these areas here that were more clustered together, the sections, very small clustered sections, um, there is quite a lot of the darker shading because of course you've got each one overlapping the other. So you would need to just do the darker shading around those, uh, just under those overlaps, sorry, to make it look more dimensional and to look as though this piece of hair is shading the piece of hair underneath. Hopefully that makes sense. But uh, we spoke about that over here. Now you can see because of these really tight clustered sections of hair and the amount of shading that has had to be done, um, the top crown part of the hair looks brighter and has more highlights than this area. But again, it's just about trying to show the effect of uh, the shading and I think where the light is coming from, probably from this direction, uh, there would be more dark shading as we curve around this lady's head. So I've done my absolute best and there are some areas where I've probably overdone it a little bit, but that's just, that's just me. Um, there are ways of uh, clawing back some highlights if you've done the same. So there's a couple of ways. You can either use a, a very opaque white pencil like the Prismacolor White, and let me just find an area of darkness here. So let's just say this bit and get it very sharp, obviously, again, and really, really fine, sharp strokes will just lift off some of the darkness and give you a bit more shine. But it's not foolproof because it can just end up looking like a, a light kind of muddy version of the colour you've got underneath. So probably a better way of doing it is to get yourself a really sharp eraser. So you could either use uh, one of these, which is a Faber-Castell pencil eraser. So the whole thing is made, the whole core is made out of a rubber and you can just erase really precise areas. Um, or you could use a battery operated one. That's a really good idea because you get a little bit more power behind it to lift the pigment off the page. If you do have one of these, make sure it's nice and sharp. Go to an area where you think it might be too dark. And the great thing about Prismas, uh, sorry, Polychromos, is that because they're oil based, they do erase really well. So if there are areas that you want to bring some highlights back in, you can just use this precise eraser to, to do that. So now we're going to move on to the black hair and I'll get the pencils ready for that. Okay, so the colours that I've chosen for the black hair are not just black, as you might imagine, but we have some greys in there and a blue as well. So if we just have a look at these colours, move all this to one side. We have got, of course, the black, which is 199. The blue that I've chosen is light ultramarine, which is 140. Then we have cold grey 2 and cold grey 4, which are 231 and 233. So we're going to start off with the black. This time we are going to go in with our darkest colour because we do want the dominant colour of this hair to, of course, be black. So I'm going to zoom you in and then we'll get started, let's say, this section here. And I'll do a few sections with you as before and then we'll speed up the rest of it so that you're not sat listening to my boring voice saying the same thing over and over again. So I've got the pencil really sharp, as always, and we'll start off with this section. So it's exactly the same technique. We are flicking up from the bottom and initially we just want to plot how far our colours need to go and how much we need to leave for highlights. So exactly the same technique as before. So I'm just going to do a bit for now and then come down from the top. All the time following the curve of the illustration, the lines, but also making sure that your lines are varying in length. A bit more, a bit longer down there and then a bit longer up here. And again, quite light pressure for now, just while we plan out what we're gonna do. We are then gonna bring in our cold gray four, which is 233, as I mentioned. Again, really sharp. And we're going to lengthen those lines just a little bit more. Again, not going too far into the centre and making sure that we keep that, that rough, jagged length going on. 
and then the cold grey too, which can go almost all the way into the centre. But just for now, I'm going to leave a bit of white. So at the minute, it's looking like a very light kind of silvery tone. So if you're going to do grey hair, you could probably do something like this, maybe with a few more layers and strokes put in there to build it up. I'm going to go back to the black and start to fill that in a little bit more. So you can see that the layers are building up. We're getting a deeper colour. But we're still not going too far with our lines. I've just gone onto her face there a little bit, but I can always go in with something like, um, let's see. I've got a colourless blender here. Sometimes that works just on these tiny little spots, just to buff them out a little bit, that'll do. Again, this isn't going to be the fully saturated layer just yet. And then back in with the cold grey four, building up the depth, rotating the pencil constantly, and the cold grey two. So this can start to creep right into the centre. And it's up to you whether you want to um, keep a very white area for shine or whether you want to make all of your highlight this this light cold grey too. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back with the cold grey four and there's not very many um, of those darker grey lines in the centre and I don't want there to be loads but I do want there to be some because I want to see some strokes and variation within the highlight as well as it you know being the lightest part we still have to have a few strokes coming down. Now I'm going to bring the black back and again as the layers build you see it getting darker and deeper and I'm also bringing these black lines in just a little bit more and making some of them come right down through the highlight. You don't want that highlight to be too big, too wide or too stark on the hair because it still is black hair after all. And at the moment it's still looking a little grey. Now I'm going to bring in the Light Ultramarine 140 and coming from the black, sort of from the mid, mid centre point of the black, we're going to do some of this blue. So the blue just gives it, um, it gives it a little bit of dimension and makes it look a bit less boring than just colouring hair black. Um, oftentimes shades of black can appear quite blue in the light. So we're just putting that bit in there for now. I'm going to come in again with the black and just make sure that I've got enough of that on the section. It doesn't matter if you go over the lines, but just make sure at this stage that the deepest area of black at either side of the section is completely burnished with black. So there's no white speckles or bits of grey. There might be slight bits of grey because your strokes are extending up here, but we mostly want the darkest areas to be as dark as they can be. So now bringing back the cold grey four and slightly blending the tips of the black out with that because we want to make this look shiny as well as textured. So if there's too many harsh lines, it can go the wrong way but if there's too much blending you're not getting any texture so it really is just about getting it to the point that you think it looks best and I mean everybody's gonna think differently you could do just a complete seamless blend with a block shine in the middle which would look fine but if we're trying to go for a, a semi-realistic look here and I always say semi-realistic because I'm not you know I'm no good at realism but we're going for that that look of hair so we do want to keep the lines in certain places. So again with the black and this should be deepening up every time you go over it and we're going to bring back the light ultramarine one more time to really get that blue tone in there. So just keep fiddling around with it until you're happy. Try not to overwork it which is exactly what I do. <laughs> but um, try not to. So I'm just making sure that this is as black as we can get it. So we do have that blue 
definitely showing through but it is not a dominant colour on this hair it is part of the shine it's part of the highlight so as I said before take a step back have a look have a look at the um, the work that you've done so far every so often just to see if it's on the right track of what you think but that's exactly the look that I was going for so we will continue so again zooming you in so we're just looking for mainly black with just a hint of blue in the highlight if you just keep that in mind and one section on its own always looks weird so do the whole thing um, and then see what you think sometimes people abandon projects and I, I'm um, I'm definitely guilty of that as well because they think it's gone completely peat tong oftentimes if you see that through to the finish to the bitter end you'll actually come back to it maybe the next day and you'll see it with fresh eyes and think actually you know it's not as bad as I thought it was and nothing that I do on this video is a perfect technique or the exact technique that you must use um, it's all trial and error really and as long as it's effective at the end which I think it, it will be then it looking a bit scrappy all the way through, it, it doesn't matter. As long as at the end, you know, it ca it's eye catching and the contrast is there. So I'm doing exactly the same as before. Working on the black and the greys first to get that base tone down before coming in with the blue. Make sure this is nice and sharp. Just a couple of light twists, just to get that super sharp point back with the black so yeah the blue isn't a necessity it's just what I've chosen for this particular tutorial but if you are coloring black hair and you want to use um, just greys that's absolutely fine I've gone into the face there again um, but it will create more of a silvery greyish tone overall whereas I think the blue makes this look as if it's so black that it's appearing a different color in the light which is what I'm aiming for anyway. So we are using quite a lot of our darkest colour on this hair compared to the, the golden bronze, whatever you want to call it, that we've just done, um, where I only use the deepest colour quite sparingly. Uh, with this one, we do want to use quite a bit of black because it's never going to look like black hair if we don't use plenty of really, really dark pencil. Just going to define the edge of that section a little bit more. Bit of the cold grey for. I don't want to go again too far with it so I'm just being quite mindful and I'm just bringing a few flicks of this blue into the black. Now as I mentioned earlier they're not very opaque or they're more transparent for sure than a wax pencil these polychromos. So oops so you might not be able to layer too much over the black but you will be able to get little sharp indents and flicks in there and that's that's all we need we don't really want to, to have it layered any more than that so i'm just sharpening up the edge of this section it's up to you whether you want to do that but i do like to do that i think it having those darker bits in between the sections it, it helps to make it not just all look like one one blend from there to there if that makes sense when you are happy we can move on to the next section just making sure that's really nice and dark either end and we're going for another sharpen so i'm going to do i think i'm going to do some of the smaller sections in the braid because i didn't show you that when we did when we did the blonde i'm calling it blonde blonde now <laughs> brown and blonde um i didn't show you the kind of smaller bits so i'm going to do that on this just giving these pencils a quick sharpen and we'll move down to something along here so again with the black remember to rotate um, your paper as much as you want to to get it into position where your wrist can make that natural movement for the flicks same again on the underside if you've done a long stroke here, you know that you don't want to do a long stroke here. You want to leave this one quite short. So it almost looks as if it's going into, like if this is your short bit and that's going into it, uh, that's what we want to achieve. 
So let's, if th this one's a bit longer, then let's make one of these a bit longer at the bottom that is sort of a little bit further away from that so that we create this, this zigzag pattern. Cold Grey 2 doesn't do much in this blend, but it's good for keeping that black, um, keeping some strokes alive within the black, if that <laughs> makes any sense, um, because your black can get very blocky quite easily. And this is good for just keeping keeping a bit of the, the silver tone going through to the black. Making sure the very top of the black is super filled in and burnished and complete, uh, completely solid and saturated. And this bit just against the cheek can be quite dark as well because the cheek is overlapping that area. So really, you can let the black meet itself here. Cold grey four, just to add a few slight strokes into the top of the black. And then our blue again. And the final thing is just to add some black, very thin black strokes on the top. Okay, so there is a section of the braid. Uh, we're gonna do exactly the same thing on the rest of the head and um, I'll come back to you when it's complete. So there we are, the finished piece. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and the design. If you have, don't forget that you can order your own copy of Colouring Heaven issue 109, Mysterious Women from the online shop. Just head to shop.colouringheaven.com or click on the link in the description. And I'd love to see your colouring in the Friends of Colouring Heaven Facebook group, which is also linked below. So please like, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on future Colouring Heaven videos. Bye. Thank you.